Liberty, you're amazing. Thank you for, for making all of this possible. My name is Kathy Hasty. Welcome, folks, and thank you for joining me for another life, life, <laughs> life sciences lesson. Blah, blah, blah. Can you believe that I can get so tongue-tied? Anyway, um, before we start, let's have a look at our joke for the day. It's actually not a joke, but it's a joke. Let's have a look. See, and I want you all to take notice of this. This is about a stem cell, and it's just a little joke about stem cells, but it says you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. So all stem cells can be anything they want to be. And then it says this is the stem cell parental advice. So it's this parent stem cell telling uh, um, other little baby stem cells that they can be anything they want to be. And it's so that you can remember two things. One, stem cells can, they are undifferentiated cells. They can develop into any different cell you need in your body. Okay, that's number one. Number two is that you sitting there, my precious learners, can be anything you want to be. Anything you want to be. And don't let COVID-19 get to you. Don't let COVID-19... I'm not talking about getting sick. I'm talking about don't let it get to you. All the nonsense going on, all the memes, all the WhatsApps, forget about it. Focus on your matric. Focus on working at home. You can do it. I know you can do it. Okay? And you've got us here at, at, at Tenfold Education. You've got the Tenfold Education app. You've got all the programs on Mindset. So people just... Put your heads down, don't worry about the rest of the world, focus and do as well as you can. Your prelims are coming up and that's what we're busy doing now. We're trying to prepare you for prelims. I've got a whole bunch of questions that have been asked and sent and a lot of them are just little short questions. So I'm going to start first of all with what a negative feedback mechanism is. Now a negative feedback mechanism is when there is an increase a corrective mechanism causes a decrease, okay, and vice versa to maintain a constant balance within the body. All right, that's a negative feedback. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a constant internal environment. So when it goes up, we bring it down. When it goes down, a sensor picks it up and we lift it. So that's how it works. So let's quickly do this. For a negative feedback mechanism, um, oh yeah, yeah, if I start like this, you must know. Um, negative feedback mechanism, you're going to have a stimulus. So that stimulus can be from external or internal. All right, the stimulus is picked up by receptors. Okay, those receptors are going to pick up the imbalance. In other words, something's gone too high, it's gone too high, or it's gone too low. Then we have a control center. And this control center, nine out of 10 times, in fact, 10 out of 10 times, is the hypothalamus. Remember, the hypothalamus links the nervous system to the endocrine system. It's the hypothalamus that coordinates the nervous system and the endocrine system so they can work together. Okay, so we have this control center, and then we have the effectors. Okay, those effectors are going to be your target organs. And the target organs then perform the function. And what happens then? We have um, the output, which is back to normal. Okay, and you must also remember at the same time, the effectors are going to then send a message to the receptors that, that picked up this imbalance and they will provide feedback. Okay, that's your negative feedback mechanism. 
Another question that was asked, let me just see who it was by here. I'll tell you now. Um, oh, no, man, I can't find. Was, was, what is homeostasis? So, and I, I can't see who it was. I've got so many questions here, people. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Oh, it was Ntabisi wanted to know what homeostasis is. Homeostasis is the body's way to maintain a constant internal environment or a balanced internal environment. Okay, that's it. That's what homeostasis is. All right, so let's just take this H off here. R next one. The next question was from Ntapi. And Ntapi wanted to know the difference between hypothyroidism, okay, and I'm writing hypo away from thyroidism, and hyperthyroidism. Okay, your general rule, except for water balance, and I'll explain why the difference is there. Hypo, think of the O for low. Okay, and hyper, think of a hypermarket. What does a hypermarket do? It's got everything. So hyper is for high. Hypo is for low. You've got an O in hypo and an O in low. Hyper is when it is high. So when we want to know hyperthyroidism, that here, the, the thyroid is underactive. In other words, it's not working properly. Okay, therefore, we have less thyroxine. And if we have less thyroxine, we are going to have a lower metabolism. Okay, that's how it works. So hypothyroidism, low working of the, of, of the thyroid. It's not working. It's underactive. It's producing low amounts of thyroxine. When it is hyperthyroidism, hyper means high, so then the thyroid is overactive, okay? Therefore, we have too much thyroxine. And therefore, we have a high metabolism. Okay, so just remember that, hypo, hyper. If we are hypoglycemic, it means that we have too little glucose in the blood. When we have hyper, when we are hyperglycemic, we have a lot of glucose in the blood. Okay, with water, it's the other way. So with water, we talk about um, hypoosmotic and hyperosmotic. You must remember, osmotic talks to um, uh, the amount of solutes, not the amount of water. Okay, so there are lots of solutes where there are less solutes. 